Well, that was a movie. Hello and welcome back to Simon's Rants. I'm Simon, and today I just saw Ridley Scott's Napoleon, which is of course starring Joaquin Phoenix and Vanessa Kirby. Before I get into my review of this, I'm just gonna throw it out there. I'm not a historian, I'm not a history buff. I know there's a lot of historical inaccuracies with this movie. I couldn't really tell you much about them, you know? So I'm going to be reviewing this more as a movie than as historical <laughs> fiction. Like, I, I don't know, and so I can't really judge it based off of that and I'm sorry if stuff like that really bothers you I've done a little bit of research not a lot I know stuff like the battle I don't even know which one it's called frankly but you see in the trailer where they're on the ice I know that that most likely didn't actually happen I know Napoleon wasn't present at the execution of Marie Antoinette so I know there are historical inaccuracies abounding in this movie Ridley Scott doesn't seem to care about that he would much rather tell a good story than worry about if it's accurate or not so so, uh, yeah, that's probably going to bother people, but if that's going to bother you, you probably already know based on the trailer. The trailer already shows inaccuracies, and that's kind of really Scott's MO. Like I said, I'm not an expert, so sorry, I'm not the guy for that. <laughs> what I am going to be reviewing, though, is the movie, how entertaining it was, how well it was written, how well it was directed, acted, all of those things, and hopefully I can give you a good idea of whether or not you want to see this movie. So, first of all, the theatrical cut of this movie is two and a half hours, just a little bit over, I believe. If you've heard reports of a four hour cut, that's going to be hopefully coming later on Apple TV Plus or whatever that's called, it's not going to be in theaters. At least it, there are no plans, no announcements for that. That is a later thing. Right now it's just a two and a half hour version of it. And I think watching this movie you could kind of tell that uh, there needed to be a little bit more runtime. I don't know that another hour and a half was necessary, necessarily, but uh, it definitely felt like some things were glossed over and I wanted to delve into them more. I will also say that this movie is less interested in Napoleon, the strategist, and, you know, the mind, uh, as they are in him as a person, as a human. This movie really is about why he is the way he is, because, you know, he's a narcissist, he's a he's an egomaniac, I mean, he's got a Napoleon complex, that, that whole phrase is based around a guy who felt inadequate, so he went out of his way to conquer the world. Also, this movie it delves into the fact that there's this love, this romance that he felt slighted by, that he didn't feel fulfilled by, that he felt like he was cheated on, and so dedicated a large portion of his life to taking it out on the rest of the world, honestly. And see, that is a very interesting concept to me. That's not what I necessarily thought this movie was going to be when I first sat down. I was kind of expecting like a more in-depth look at his strategy. You know, you always hear Napoleon is a great mind, a great war mind, strategist, all these things. And I was really excited to see why, because I've heard those things, but I never really knew. I mean, like I said, I'm not a big history buff, not a historian or anything. So I hear these things, but don't know the nitty gritty of it. Uh, but after having seen this movie, I still don't know anything about that and I'm interested and I'll probably look into it later now but this movie doesn't really care about that it it shows that he's great at what he does doesn't explain how or why he is just says yeah he's good at that like I said it's more focused on him as a person and how he develops you see him start out as a very scared timid person one of the examples of this that I loved is just simply in the way that he would you know get his cannons to fire he would do a, a symbol and the first time he did it he was very scared when he did it the second time he did it, he was a little more confident then he went into this like yep okay and then he wouldn't even do it he'd get his other guy to do it and that was like the progression of napoleon shown visually brilliantly it was very succinct very simple but it, it said a lot with a little, and I love that about this movie. I think people will be split on how Joaquin Phoenix chose to portray Napoleon because, like I said, he kind of is portraying him as, as this insecure, um, little, <laughs> emotionally, figuratively, not physically, although he is not large. They <laughs> man, 
And I think some people may be like put off by that. This isn't like a, a manly man's movie like uh, Gladiator was, you know, or Braveheart. And that's kind of what I went in expecting and I was way off. So if you're expecting that, don't expect that. That's not what this is. It's very much a look what an insecure man can do to the world. You know, one man's insecurity can turn everything upside down, can ruin, can, you know, create cities and tear them down. And uh, I found that very interesting. Honestly, once I realized and accepted what this movie was, I was in love with the concept. And it made me think like, I was actually thinking, I about like making a movie about Hitler with the same the same idea where it's not like you're feeling sorry for Hitler I wouldn't try to convey that but showing like he was a little man he was insecure and that is what led to all these things uh, with him I think it was more of like his art passion was slighted rather than a romance I don't know of anything in Hitler's history about uh, you know unrequited love or anything but it's oftentimes it's these men that need to feel fulfilled in these things and they aren't and so they will go to the ends of the world they will tear, tear the world apart to try to feel whole try to feel satisfied try to feel vindicated or good enough and you know that leads to a lot of people in life doing a lot of things uh, I would say frankly it's relatable to me at least I, I, I'm sure it is to a lot of guys women too I'm sure where it's like a lot of things I do in my life is to try to prove something to other people and you try to fight that you try to just be you know be satisfied in yourself your opinions of yourself but I mean there's so many things that I've done that are like I'm trying to prove somebody else wrong and it has nothing to do with what I'm doing you know like you watch like sports documentaries to get it off of myself and back on to generalizations but it's like you watch like the last dance with Michael Jordan if you haven't seen that everything he does it's like it's gotta be he's trying to prove something he's trying to prove people wrong and you don't get that good at basketball if if you're not that insecure if you're not that motivated to prove everyone wrong and be the best like you you have to have something kind of like psychologically wrong with you to get that good at something and it's a fascinating concept you know i've talked about uh before how like I don't think anybody that gets famous is completely sane because the the what it takes the drive that is required to get there is astronomical so it's like yeah there's a lot of these actors or celebrities that like they seem like pretty well-rounded and and normal I'm sure if you talk to them you'd find at least the vast majority of them they're a little off because you have to be to have the drive to get there most people are not that way most normal people cannot succeed in that way because they they're fine at the end of the day they can go to bed at the end of the day and not feel like they need to do something to live you know and going back to Napoleon that's what this movie is about where it's like he never was satisfied he always felt like he had to accomplish more and he was saying yeah it's for France it's for nobility it's for this it's for that but ultimately it was to get the respect from the women in his life whether it's his mother or his wife and you know I think that's a really interesting way of approaching this like I said that's not what I was expecting but once I sat and thought about it I was like that's the obvious way that this movie should go like I said Napoleon Complex is called that for a reason and I think that was the only correct way to portray him in a movie I don't know how historically accurate this movie is I know it's not very. I don't know how far that goes. There's a lot of writing back and forth between Napoleon and Josephine, his wife, and I'd assume, you know, that's pretty easy to just lift from the actual letters. I don't know, though, that they did that. I don't know. But like I said, it, it whether it's accurate or not, it was entertaining. Ridley Scott knows what he's doing when it comes to making period pieces, when it comes to a grand uh, action sequences. Frankly, my favorite scene in the whole movie is an action sequence. It is the scene that they do show in the trailer partially about, you know, that 
mythical <laughs> battle that happened on the frozen lake. And that scene was so beautiful, so wonderful. Um, and I kind of wish still there was more of that and maybe a director's cut will add to that. Probably not, I'd assume not. But I really, like I said, I wanted to see more of the, the action, more of the, the mind behind the battles, why he was so brilliant at what he did. Because like I said, that's not the focus of this movie. Not mad that it wasn't, but now I am still curious. I haven't had that curiosity satisfied at all. <laughs> I will also say this movie is hilarious. Um, at times, I felt like it went too far with the humor. There was parts where I was like, this felt like it was fighting between being that gladiator kind of movie and being, don't look up, like a farce, a parody. And uh, that kind of threw me off at times. I think overall, it leveled out and the comedy for the most part worked and was was fine in the amount of it. But there was a couple points where I was like, all right, we're doing a little too much. But I, I thought the comedy in its dryness was very good. Like Napoleon is portrayed as a very awkward character. Like I, I almost wonder, is Joaquin Phoenix playing him autistic? And I don't think he was, but maybe a little bit where it's like, he's, you know, a little bit weird. And that would make sense, frankly. I don't know if there's any documentation that would go as far enough to, as that we could come to that conclusion. But it's like when people are that brilliant, that smart, that, in tune with one thing, it's usually because they they have a little autism, and so I wouldn't be surprised at all if he was. I don't know if there's any backing for that historically, and I don't know that that's what they were going for, but I got a hint of that in his performance. So he's very quirky, very offbeat, very weird, awkward, and there's a lot of great comedic moments in that that felt natural. Like, there's just... A, a romance between him and his wife that just feels so unnatural and so awkward, intentionally so. And I thought that that was done really well. So yeah, at the end of the day, I enjoyed it. I'm not sure how much I did because I am such a big fan of historical accuracy in movies. So that's a detractor to me when I know that a lot of it's fake. I also feel like it really needed extra runtime dedicated to it. So maybe when that director's cut comes out, it will end up being phenomenal and everything that I hoped for. I'm not banking on that though. I think at the end of the day, this movie was good, not great. I liked a lot of the ideas they were conveying. I didn't always love the execution. I thought, for instance, there's a lot of gore in there that is tacky to me. It wasn't very tasteful gore. It was kind of gross out gore. And I get it, you know, that era of warfare was brutal, dude. And I get that. And I think they were trying to convey that. But at the same time, I was just kind of like, eh, not huge into that. I thought it was a little grotesque. Uh, kind of reminded me of a gross out horror movie or comedy like, you know, James Gunn's Suicide Squad. It was kind of in that range a couple times. And I was like, not really what I'm looking for in this. Uh, then again, that's all pretty subjective. I don't have any hard complaints with this movie other than the pacing, which I think, like I said, should be alleviated with the director's cut whenever that comes out. So overall, a good movie feels like the movie that's going to get better the more that I think about it. Like walking out of the theater, I gave it a six. And just now talking about it, I already want to give it a seven. So I'm not sure what I rate it, but somewhere in that range, I did enjoy it. I am very curious about a director's cut whenever that does come out. Uh, so if you've seen it, let me know what you think. Also, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you're new here. Thanks, guys. Bye.